The Alliance is pretty new at putting out electric fencing. What we're looking at um, is just starting an electric fencing program because there are a lot of issues here with bears. Bears getting into chicken coops, bears getting into garbage, bears getting into fruit trees. And for all those things, electric fencing has worked really well in many, many areas all across Canada. So we're thinking, okay, it's time for us to seriously look at an electric fencing program. So the first thing we've done really is started, we've trained a couple of people here who can do electric fencing because we didn't have anybody here who could go out and help homeowners with electric fencing. So if a homeowner has an issue with, with fruits, with a fruit tree or garbage or with a chicken coop, they'll contact us and then we'll send one of our uh, two people who have training in electric fencing out to that home and they'll work with the homeowner and come up with the best possible solution. So one of the things we're looking at is a loaner program for electric fencing. So if a homeowner has an issue, say, with garbage or, or chickens, they would contact us and we would send out one of our electric fencing people with an electric fence. They will put it up with the homeowner and the homeowner will have some time to look at it, decide if they like it, how it works, and see how it works. And if, they, if it works, they can buy it and, and use it use it for the rest of the season. If they don't like it, then they can return it to us and, and then we will work with the homeowner to find another solution. Our hope is that the electric fencing will provide a solution that's easy for the homeowner to keep their livestock, their, their produce, their garbage out of the reach of bears. But at the same time, it, it protects those bears so that they don't get they don't get killed mm -hmm. and it's a win-win for both and that's one of our uh, hopes with electric fencing. Simply uh, electrical fencing is a deterrent to prevent carnivore, well usually it's in relation to bears, mm -hmm. uh, to prevent them accessing an attractant source so it's been used a lot for a long time for beehives to protect uh, beehives out in the bush. People will set up electric fencing and more and more it's being used to protect uh, other attractants now. Fairly simple technology. It involves a negative deterrent. A bear touches the fence, it gets a shock and uh, it's a fairly, fairly painful stimulus and then it learns to identify that fence and it doesn't want to experience that again so it will not access, if it's done properly, it will not mm -hmm. access what's inside it again. You know, it's got to be done properly, that's the key, but if it, if it is done properly you can protect uh, whatever's inside the fence. And if it's not grounded properly it will not deliver a sufficient enough shock to be a deterrent. That's probably the, you know, the biggest mistake. Uh, another one would be wires are too loose and they're touching vegetation or touching each other, shorting out the system. And then you know, sometimes they're not high enough so animals can leap over them. If, if you just go out and buy a set up and just try and figure it out for yourself without trying to do some research on how to do it right, there's a good chance you won't have an effective system set up. The technology's gotten better over the years. Uh, you, don't, you, you, know, you can run off batteries, it can run off solar, and there's, there's all kinds of applications that will meet just about any situation you're in. Um, it, it can become challenging when you're dealing with large, large areas because there is a cost associated with the fence. Mm -hmm. So it's best suited for smaller enclosures. It's something we're, we're encouraging. We're seeing more of it and we definitely think it's a good idea and we're, we're trying to promote that. And so is the coexisting with Carnivores Group and Wild Safe and Wild Wise. Everybody's pushing electric fencing because it is it does work. I've been to a couple situations where people had problems and coexisting with carnivores. People came out and brought an electric fencing expert with them and helped people set it up or help fix something. In one case, somebody had an electric fence that wasn't done properly and they came out and said, here's what you're doing wrong because what was happening to the bear was just going over top of the fence. It wasn't getting shocked. The fence then mm -hmm. um, we put in last year and uh, I had been humming and hawing about it, but Nitya, bring her, her brilliant self, brought in this guy who's the, you know, guru of bear fences. Mm -hmm. And so he, uh, he came and actually helped put the whole fence together. And uh, we did it in a couple of days. And it worked. It was no kill last year. From Nitya's perspective, she was hoping that we would uh, do it in such a way that there was a corridor for the animals not to be trapped this fence. If you look that way you see Kangaroo Road <laughs> and um, so the fence goes down to the road along and then up that side.
It cost about a thousand bucks. That's what I wanted to spend and they brought it in for around that. That was really good. Jeff, uh, I think he uh, wanted to have a showcase, you know, of his talent and stuff. So um, he was easy with um, making it happen. They also brought an, another kind of volunteer who was into game cameras and setting up and he helped. And uh, so it took a matter of three or four days in the end but it was only a thousand dollars if i had to get help and do it from scratch i'm sure it would be over two grand there's a fair amount of wire you know there's a couple kilometers of wire um so um beyond the land being used for agricultural purposes which we want to happen we get the tax break as well so it's worth it to us um what we save in taxes easily pays for the fence in a year what happened was she had a workshop talking about large animals and she brought Jeff in to talk about building bear fences so I went mm. to that talk and then I said I want to do this and she said great I want to do a project and I want to see how we can one make the fence work and also protect these large animals so that they're not killed. The, the down part and what she, which we're trying to make sure stays on top of mind is that if we put electric fencing all over the place, the corridors that these bears travel will, will basically be restricted. They won't be able to travel like they used to. The electric fencing makes a lot of sense. It's expensive, uh, it's fairly expensive. So you don't want to put it all over 10 acres. You're going to put it in places where you need it, where you know, right, right around the chicken coop, right around the fruit trees that you're trying to protect. So it's, it's fairly, it can be fairly small fixes, and that'll also keep the bears away and let them keep going in their own, in their own path.